Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lackshock Stoker here with ESPN, bringing you the recap of tonight's Mako Las Vegas Bowl featuring the University of Utah Utes against the BCS Buster Broncos. Uh, obviously, this year they did not make it because of the loss to Reno. So, going to Las Vegas, let's see if it's just a Nevada jinx or if the Broncos can pull it out. Speaking of, they're about 16.5 point favorites in this game, according to the Las Vegas spread tonight. But uh, as you can see, uh, Utah has definitely shown up and they're fired up. Uh, Newsflash Terrence Kane will not be starting this game. Uh, number three will for the Utah Utes quarterback. And here's the kickoff to open the Mako Las Vegas Bowl. He kicks it deep to about the three yard line. PSU brings it out about the 18, 19 yard line. Here's a handoff to Jeremy Avery by Kellen Moore. Picks up a few, if anything, uh, injures the Utah quarterback. But what it really did was it brought up fourth down for this field goal attempt, which, what is it? It is good. Kyle Bratzman does not just miss in Las Vegas or in Nevada. It must just be a Reno thing. And here we go, Kellen Moore on the long bomb. Hits Tyler Shoemaker on about the one, and then th a little bit of help from the uh, Utah linebacker pushes him across that goal line, putting BSU up 10 to zero early in this one, uh, early in the second. And then here we go once again. Kellen Moore drops back, passes, hits his guy over the middle. There's a flag. Uh, ends up being roughing the passer on Utah, puts BSU in great field position. Here's Kellen Moore. Has time, throws, hits his, no wait, it is dropped by Shoemaker in the back of the end zone. Should have been six, but you know, if you can touch it, you can catch it. Obviously, he was never taught that in his uh, learning of football. So here we go, one last shot to try and get in the field, or in the end zone, and with third. Third down, Kelmore all day, scrambles out a bit to the right. Thinks he has a guy towards the back of the end zone, launches it, but the defense is there. Nice deflection by the Utah cornerback, forcing a Bronco field goal. Once again, Brotsman about the same distance as Reno, but this time good. So he is 2 for 2 today as compared to his 0 for 2 against uh, University of Nevada. So it is, Las Vegas is proving to be a lot better to him than Reno is. Uh, here's a deep pass from Utah to put them in pretty good field position. And another one, back-to-back -back good passes to set them up in field goal range, well in the range of their kicker, who's been known to drain some from 50-plus yards, lines up offsides. That sets them back a nice five yards. You know the coach is killing them after that. He lines up for the 58-yard attempt to make them trail by 10, forcing back to two-possession game. And he is short. 58 yards, you know that offside penalty is probably the leading factor to that. That guy not feeling good about that. Bronco fans loving it, knowing they're up 13-0 going into halftime. For the Broncos, favorite 16-0, this is looking pretty good. But uh, Utah comes back out in the second half with firing. Here you go, nice pass from number three. Gets this guy open, gets in some nice yards, putting them back in field goal position. Rolls back, hits this guy, oh, on the nice little break on the post, hits this guy on the, in the Utah end zone, giving them six points. The field goal attempt would be good, making this a one possession game. Utah 7, Boise State 13. Here we go with a pick on the next possession. Kellen Moore hits uh, the defense, hits this guy pretty well, but good coverage uh, gets the interception. Utah can't do anything with it. Forced to kick a field goal. It's up. It's good. This game is within three points now. Utah showed up in the second half to definitely push uh, Boise State to their limits. It winds down. Utah gets a nice play right there out of their wide out. Making some yards. Uh, number three rolls out. Hits another guy on the curl. Be it, they're just moving the ball like no one's business. Luke Matthews on that reception. But there's a holding penalty against the Utah Utes. Puts them back. Gets them a little bit back there. Still in field goal range. Get tied up. But that sack really puts them out of field goal range. And this one didn't help either. Now it's fourth down. They punt the ball. Because they still got all three timeouts, right? All they need is to stop. Uh, 
And they're right back in it. Kellen Moore hands off to Jeremy Avery. Utah's already used one timeout. Picked up the first down. Utah really hurt. No timeouts left. Hand off to Avery. And Avery fumbles the football late in the fourth quarter with just over a minute left. You know that no one in Boise was happy about that. They're going, really? Could this happen again? We're up big in the second quarter or in the halftime and we blow it in the second half? This can't happen. You know, Buster Bronco, he was pissed right there. Now, number three rolls out again. Throws it deep. He's got his guy open cornering the end zone, and it's dropped. He couldn't keep two or a foot in bounds. Should have been six. Last play, it's tipped on the line. Picked off by Acre. That's Boise State's win, and so they're going to roll out of here with the Mako Las Vegas Bowl victory. Uh, nice interception. BSU's defense comes up big in the end, exactly what they needed. Here you go, Kellen Moore taking the knee to solidify the Boise State win. I had predicted Utah to win this. I have Boise State had predicted to win this, Utah. So expect it. It's kind of who I was rooting for, but you know, that's just how the bowl games go. It's a great system. BSU obviously disappointed they make a BCS bowl game and said TCU's in the Rose Bowl, but uh, this is Laxrock Topher. Uh, planning on bringing you guys more of these, maybe not so cheesy, but kind of. Bull Sims of the more popular games and the BCS games is Lash Rock Stouffer. Keep gaming.